Now the last thing we want to do that we've created our form, we've styled it, is to create some sort of form validation. Now to do this, I'm going to open up my behaviors window, which I don't have over here on my right hand side. So I'm going to go to window and choose behaviors. Make sure you choose behaviors and not server behaviors. Server behaviors is if we're using server-side languages such as PHP, ASP.NET, and that's for doing a completely different set of things. I want to use my behaviors. Dreamweaver has a built-in form validator. The thing to do is to click inside my form, then go down and choose my form tag and click on it. Now that my form is highlighted, I've clicked on it, I'm going to choose my, go over my tag inspector, where my behaviors are, choose a plus to add a behavior, go down near the bottom where it says validate form. If you look and see what I have available to me, only my input that's of type text, or my text fields as streamer calls them, and my text areas, my multi-row text, is available for me to use. I cannot do a validation for things like a drop-down list or a check boxes or radio buttons. I'll have to use a different field if I want to do that. For my name, I'm just going to say it's required, and they can put anything they want there as long as they put a name. I wish I had an option to be able to say I want at least five characters long, but you don't have that ability. You can just say it's required. Right here, you'll notice after my name, you'll notice it has a little R in it. That means it's showing it's required. If I go to my email, I can once again also say this is required, but down here where it says accept, I have some other options. So I can choose, for example, is an email. I also have the ability to check for numbers and if it's a, within a range of numbers, but that doesn't matter to me right now. What I want to be looking at is my email address because this is obviously going to be my email. My text area, I'm also going to just say is required because if they don't leave me a value, there, I don't know what the question or what the comment is about their problem or their suggestion or however it is they want to place it. So I'm just going to make sure it's required. I'm going to say OK. You notice it doesn't look like anything's been done here, but if I go into a split window and look at my source code, my form, I have something called an on submit action. And that means when I go to click the submit button, it's going to go and validate this form and it's going to return a value of true or false. And that's just going to let me know, hey, did I fill this in correctly? If I scroll up a little bit, you notice it's added a bunch of JavaScript code, and this is what it needs to determine if I'm going to work correctly or not. You don't have to worry about understanding it. You just have to make sure it's applied to the correct spot. You notice right here my tag inspector, I see the on submit and validate the form. If I go to live view to test this out, if I say click here, you notice it's going to generate an, an error message saying my name is required, email is required, comments required. If I put in my name, and put in my name again, click this send us an email. You notice that now that it sees that it's required, I have something in my email field, it's going to let that go, but it says, hey, you, email must contain an email address. You might say, well, how does it know what I'm picking? This is based upon the name and ID that we gave it when we created those form fields. Click on OK. I can choose things such as uh, my shipping. Submit it and it went right on through without any types of problems because it was all filled out correctly.